This is not a talk about women queuing for the loo. Did you know that most office and communal buildings have equal square meters for men and women's toilets? Then why do women have to queue for the loo? Yes, I know what you're thinking. Women do indeed take longer over toilet visits. In fact, it has been calculated. Women take up to 2.3 times longer than men for going to the loo. And here's why. Out of all women sitting here today, one out of four in the ages of bearing children have their periods right now. And for those who are wondering, yes, I am one of them. <laughs> If later on you would need assistance to go to the toilet, you're probably accompanied by a woman, and probably also to the woman's toilets. Women have eight times more chances to getting urinary infections, leading up to longer toilet time. And then I have not addressed yet the fact that we tend to wear more difficult clothes. What I have presented to you is commonly known as a wicked problem. A wicked problem is a problem that seemingly cannot be fixed or where there are multiple solutions to the problem. But more interesting is that wicked also means resistance to finding a sustainable solution. When I was preparing for this TED talk, I asked a lot of people like, why is it that we are still queuing for the loo? Like, why hasn't anyone solved this problem yet? And so many um, ideas arose from maybe too difficult to put more to women's toilets in the construction of the building, or maybe the architect just not being aware of the problem. But when I told them that actually this kind of data is commonly available and that you might expect from an architect to like, be more creative and put more toilets actually for women in buildings, none of them understood why it is that we're actually still queuing for the loo and why it is that more and more problems, even the most obvious and visible ones, don't get solved. It's like we all look at problems in the same way, and I can't stop wondering why. Where does this resistance to finding a sustainable solution come from? Remember your classroom, all sitting at your desk, looking at the same board and getting the same education. I think we all look at the problems in the same way. It's due to the, the way that we are actually taught. We are taught on a massive scale not to ask why. Let me introduce to you the concept of inculcation. Inculcation, not education. Inculcation means to implant by repeated statement or reprimand. It's teaching you what you can and cannot do. It's not teaching you to ask why. It's not teaching you to think for yourself. When my sons were three years old, that's all they could actually ask. Why, why, why? Why has a fork four pines and not five? Why do I have to wear a jacket to go outside when it's freezing? Why can't I touch the sun? And I hope that by the time they're adults, they still ask why. Because Don't be mistaken, whether it be national leaders, factory owners, or religious leaders, everyone wants to have a say in how you are taught. And more important, who you should become. We unlearn to ask why, because we have to fit in a predefined society. It leads up to the fact that we keep on thinking at problems and looking at problems in the same worn paths. You know when you're driving down a highway and you, your car gets stuck in these worn out, paved out trenches like by trucks? How difficult it is to get out and how sometimes it even like feels a little bit dangerous? Well, it's the same with our thinking. We are afraid to look at things from a different perspective. We're having, we even have developed a resistance to asking why. 
and people even will encourage you to stay in those trenches because then they will not get challenged either in their thinking. But wicked problems demand wicked thinking. And in order for us to face the challenges of the future in this uncertain and ambiguous and complex world where change and transformation and wicked problems exist, we really need to teach ourselves to think in a wicked way again. To be bold and brave and start asking why and crossing borders and experiment more and realize that we're biased. This is the Opera Square in Antwerp. It's a square hated by many because of the aesthetics. But th here is, this is what I see. No cobblestones where wheelchairs and buggies get stuck or my high heels. No trees to cross underneath on dark, rainy winter days. It's another way to look at this square because all of us have actually the same idea of a square in our heads. A square should be cozy, with trees and benches, and if anything possible, bathing in sunlight. But squares are only cozy for some people, some time of day, some time of year. But they're never cozy on dark, rainy winter days when you want to cross them as fast as possible, and they actually also feel a little bit touchy. For me, this is therefore the most awesome square ever. And I would want to hug the architect because he has been bold enough to, to fix a wicked problem. And our toilet queuing problem doesn't get solved because the people that actually are building buildings or designing buildings have been taught to think like architects. And architects have been taught to look rather at the aesthetics of the building rather than the humans that have to go to Lou. And this world doesn't like change. And people, when you feel threatened in your thinking, you even like, build up resistance to asking why. And our toilet queuing problem is just one wicked problem that we have learned to live with every day. Now imagine and think about how many wicked problems that you have learned to live with every day just because we're afraid to challenge our own thinking and to speak up and be bold and be brave. So, here are my takeaways for my talk. When next time you're in a meeting and you're faced with a wicked problem, ask why. Why? If the recipe didn't work before to solving the problem, why would it work the next time you just try it again? Second, experiment. If you feel threatened in your thinking, view it as an experiment to broaden yourself and to grow. What could go wrong? Go for empathy and walk a mile in the other one's shoes. Learn that you are biased. Learn that you're actually inculcated, but realize that you can unlearn it as well. And find your inner child and start to imagine again. And then maybe, maybe in the future, our toilet queuing problem might get solved. And while we're solving that, we might not forget to put baby changing tables in the men's toilet too. Thank you very much.